so random start into the vlog because I was trying to get the baby ready this morning to actually go out. This is my first time taking him outside and it is a whole lot, which I'm sure the moms who are watching this already know, but we are at chapel because Isaac's getting an award today and I'm so excited. Look at this whole little getup that I have for the baby. Please look, don't touch. I'm too tiny for big germs. Thank you. I love this. And then this little netting, he's just in there, just hanging out, sleep. So Isaac is already inside because he had to get here early and I just came out because I was gonna feed the baby really quick, but he's actually doing really well. So we are praying to God that he makes it through an hour of this service. And then we have this really cool luncheon that we get to do afterward. So we're gonna head back in with Isaac and yay, I'm so excited for him, y'all. You can go to that QR code there. You can see some more information. The Nathan D. Meyer Scholarship Award is sponsored by David and Jean Meyer Dean, and they are here today. Would you mind standing up so we can acknowledge you? This scholarship award is given annually at the Nathan D. Meyer Memorial Series and Bible Exposition to deserving male THM and PhD students who show promise as excellent Bible expositors, who demonstrate exemplary leadership qualities, and whose life, lives reflect the character qualities displayed in John 13, the account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. The 2023 recipients are Isaac Shepherd. All right, hey everybody. So we just got in from chapel and as you saw, Isaac won an award. Yeah. How you feeling? I'm just so grateful. Uh, God is just showing me so much favor, love yes. and grace. So I'm just grateful. I just come to school, try to learn the word so that I can, as our, uh, our motto says, learn to better teach truth and love well. Mm -hmm. So uh, just enjoying my time here. I go to class and I don't make too much noise, but I know. apparently my hard work has been uh, noticed. So, uh, so grateful and appreciative to DTS and the donors and yes. all the support that I have. So just really grateful. So was it a shock because you do, you like, you just show up to class and you, you know, you do what you gotta do. and. So was it a shock that they awarded you or? Yeah, I don't expect, um, yeah, I, I just didn't expect it. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was definitely a surprise. So yeah, I just didn't expect it. It was very unexpected. And yeah. it's just so much else happening in our life with new baby, new marriage, and yes. just, uh, new things in ministry. Um, God's every time like raining. I, yeah, every time I get adjusted to a new season, something new happens, and uh, it's it's been great. It's been really great. And it was a monetary award. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I was it like, we didn't say a that. significant amount of scholarship, which is extremely helpful with us bringing yes. in our firstborn, and you know, hoping to have more children, and mm -hmm. being in ministry, um, and, and balancing that with school. We need all the help we can get, so we're extremely grateful um, yeah. for that. Yeah, it's yeah. so awesome to see you up there and to mm -hmm. have baby see you up there, even though he was asleep. Mm -hmm. Like having him, like my dad, Be like there. he, yeah, we can talk to him about that one day. Mm -hmm. He was there when this happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So speaking of seminary, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to make a video with questions. Like people could send in questions about seminary and we could answer them. Mm -hmm. More so you, because I feel like the people on my channel know me a lot already, but I'll chime in. Mm -hmm. So, okay. okay, let me pull them up. Okay, so this person asked, how long did you serve in church before you applied to seminary and in what capacity did you serve? So, three years. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Lubbock, Texas, going to Texas Tech University. And uh, it was after my freshman year where um, you can go 
check out my salvation story um mm -hmm. we'll actually include that link in there yeah we'll put it in the description box and that's where i begin to read the bible just to summarize i began to read the bible beginning with the book of romans mm -hmm. and um just really changed my life and started really intentionally living for jesus yeah and so once i did that then when i got back to lubbock just before my sophomore year to the to the to the baptist church i was at um where my best friend's pastor was, his, his dad was his dad was the pastor. I asked him if I could read the scripture. So it started mm -hmm. off. That was my. That's how I started serving at that church. Yeah. Started reading scripture, and then it turned from that to giving a short or exhortation with that reading, and then from that to preaching full sermons on mm -hmm. Sundays, uh, whenever he would give me the opportunity. There were a few, maybe two or three opportunities where he traveled outside. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, outside the state or whatever, and he left me, you know, in charge to to lead worship, to lead the service, to be like the service host. That's insane. Um, and all that. So, um, that's how I served, and then it was once I graduated. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when I decided to go to seminary. So, yeah. so start, how so long before, did you do that? So that was three full years. So three that full was years of that doing was that. 2016 to 2019. Wow. And in 2019, that that fall, I started seminary. Can y'all imagine like the pastor leaving and being like, "Oh, you can lead the church while I'm gone." It's yeah, insane. it was a small I'd church. I'd be so scared. It was a small it doesn't church. Matter. It I'd doesn't be, matter. Right? I would be. It was about oh I would gosh. say on average 20 to to 40 um congregants. Mm -hmm. And so uh it was real real I guess I shouldn't say that, but it was real simple, you know, just welcome everyone and, yeah. you know, tell them what's coming up next and, you know. You're a young college kid, though. Right. Like, it's crazy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, you heard me preach a lot and, you know, I really was close to the family. Uh -huh. So they knew me outside of church. Mm -hmm. I was like a, a you know, another child. Yeah. And I was, so yeah. I was trustworthy. I remember they gave me a key to their home. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they, they awesome really trusted people. me. Yeah. So next question. How long does the application process typically take to get into seminary? It depends on what seminary you're going to. Um, I can't remember a time frame. I don't either. But it does. There, there, there's it was usually an extensive a application, though. Yeah, there's usually a requirement, um, a writing portion. Right. They asked the, that. They said, is it interview or strictly essay based? Yeah, strictly essay based. And then, of For course, they one. need information. Now, one thing about uh, the school we go to, Dallas Theological Seminary, is they're, they're, they don't want you to come to seminary and you and you are already in a lot of debt. Oh, yeah. That now, that. yeah, yeah. We did so, have to mark all that. Yeah, you have to let them Inform know them. all of your finances and yeah. then your plan. Yeah. And so, it, and based on, I don't. I don't know, but I do know a friend who was denied because mm. of 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 their debt. So um, they do look at that, and mm -hmm. so that's kind of how the that's the, those are the two major um, and recommendations. Portions. And you have to get recommendations. Yep. Yes, yep. like a pastoral, mm -hmm. um, like people in your church, people that you've done ministry with. I think it was like three recommendations that I had to turn in, mm -hmm. and so. Back to the first question of asking, like, in what capacity did you serve? It's important to serve because if you don't right. have any connections to your church, then there's not going to be anyone to recommend you. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's good. But, yeah, the debt thing is also really good. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Someone else asked about tuition. And so mm -hmm. they asked, what is tuition like? And I think it varies everywhere. But I think you kind of spoke to finances, like making sure that you're not in a lot of debt because... It does cost money. Like you can't, you can't come to seminary for free, and it's real. It's not cheap. Like right. we're so grateful that you got blessed with that scholarship. Absolutely. So and there is scholarship opportunities. Yeah, um, I have a scholarship available. too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's opportunities for that um, based on like your major. So the one that you mm -hmm. got is based on your major. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, um, "What is the difference between your husband's degree and your degree?" And so your scholarship that you just won is based off of your degree type. And so can you talk about what degree program you're in a little mm -hmm. bit? I think it was based off two things. My mm -hmm. degree program is, is called the THM, Master of Theology. Um, and then I, I have a major in Bible exposition. Uh-huh. Your so, concentration. Yeah, for my concentration. So... Uh, the THM is is the most extensive program. So that's the difference. Um, Mine is not as extensive. Yeah. So you have <laughs> you have your 
Okay, everybody does biblical studies. You study each book of the Bible. You walk through. You do overviews. Part I really love about uh, DTS. You yes. go through all sixty six. Um, and some, you know, you don't cover the details, but you do get an overview. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have your theological studies, you know, systematic theology, yep. uh, uh, Trinitarianism, soteriology, uh, ecclesiology, eschatology, all those. All the so major everybody doctrines. takes those. But then, you know, if you're in the THM program, especially mm -hmm. if you, you know, depend on, on your track, you take preaching classes. Yeah. Which are required. Um, I, didn't, have to, I didn't have to take that. You have to do four semesters of Hebrew, five semesters of Greek. I didn't have to do that. So, um, and then your internship, you have your internship requirement, which is for both. Um, yeah, I think every, mm -hmm. well, there are, some, there are like four degrees that don't have an internship tied to them, but they're labeled something different. I can't remember the differences, yeah. but most of the degrees you are required to do an internship or a residency. Mm -hmm. And I know for my degree, I don't know if you have to do this, but I have to do, there's a some type of research uh, seminar no. that I have to do. No. Yeah, so at <laughs> the end, I'll have to do some kind of research um, in preparation for graduation. So yeah. that's another thing. There might be some few other things I'm missing, but that's the, the major portion is those languages because that's yeah. five semesters of Greek. That's a long time. That's a yeah. lot of that's a this lot of hours. Very, it's like thirty thirty plus. That's like thirty hours. The languages alone. That's a lot. So that's like half of my whole program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, correct me if I'm mistaken, but wasn't it? in the past that you, there was only this program and then they decided to have other programs added to it but i like, don't know if this was the only I, program i know it probably it, it was it only could, for preachers it could it could have been because with the history of, of dts it was male only so mm -hmm. they were primarily equipping pastors, pastors. Yeah. so it, it probably was only thm but now mm -hmm. you have biblical counseling you have the yeah. christian education christian leadership mm -hmm. mb what, the media master, ministry media like, me, media arts and worship you have yeah. all kinds of different apologetics and evangelism you mm -hmm. have a lot of stuff so yeah yeah, but yeah, so he takes a lot more credit hours. He's going to be here a lot more time. Yeah, it's 120, 120, 23 hours with my, uh, which is basically an undergrad degree. Yeah, so, it's a yeah. lot, mm -hmm. but we're grateful and it's all useful. You love it all. Mm -hmm. Like it's not yeah. even like class and he comes home and he's like, yep, I have so much fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, this question. Did you apply to more than one seminary? I didn't. I researched a lot before, and I was like, I know this is where I want to go. Yeah, I think I applied to, I know I applied to SMU. That was the first, that's where I started. Mm -hmm. Their um, school of theology there. And then I, I, I wonder if I applied to DTS. It's because I knew somebody at SMU that went to my one of my home churches. So that you were supposed to be kinda, here all along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I spent a semester there and left. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I only applied to, you know, one to, and if it would have been more, it was probably one to three. Yeah. SMU or Southwestern. And, How'd you make your um, decision? So. Oh, like, you said you I, knew I someone knew somebody, there. Yeah. And, and then so, it didn't work out and you and came And it didn't here. work out. And so then, you know, yeah. DTS was right up the street. And so that's a whole other story of how I and came here <laughs> on one day um, and kind of knew this was where I needed to, to move. Yeah, so. it's like the Lord led you here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what has been the most difficult part of being a seminary student? And then what's been the most rewarding part? I can speak to that first, if you want to think. The most difficult part in the beginning, like I, it was like culture shock for me because the church that I was in was... it. it the theology was a lot more liberal and um, focused on like politics and what was, you know, it was, it, it, it wasn't so, um, Bible exposition was not like in the forefront, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so when I came here and I'm learning all of these different things and all of these doctrines and like all of this stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, I'd never been exposed to this at this level. And I had been a Christian my whole life and I couldn't believe that there were so many things that I didn't know or that I was confused about or that I had misconceptions about. And I just felt like I was wrecked and I needed to change like my whole outlook about things. And so it was like a season of like, oh my gosh, like just whiplash unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And so that was probably the most difficult part at the time. 
And then the most rewarding kind of is the same because at the end of that process, I mean, your eyes are open to something that you feel like you, I, I honestly, I feel like if I hadn't come here, I don't know if I ever would have had my eyes open to the level that they are right now. Um, and so it's just, that's phenomenal. That's a gift that I will cherish because not everyone will get to experience it. And mm-hmm. so I feel blessed to have experienced that. But what about you? So I think my difficulties, honestly, were just normal, mm-hmm. you know, normal difficulties of going to school and having to do work. and um, It's a lot of balance. Yeah, just balancing that with trying to work. Um, and then I think balancing that with struggling in my personal life with yeah. pornography and masturbation and sexual immorality, I think that was really was more difficult. But that's, then again, that's not really sem- seminary hasn't been very difficult for me because I was exposed to I, I took some of the free online courses and I was always on YouTube. I was familiar You're with just Tony a Bible Evans. nerd. I was yeah, I was familiar with John MacArthur, and so I already had a thirst and desire for all this kind of stuff. So. Yeah. It, it, you were listening been, to some good teachers. Yeah, it's just been a fun experience for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a joy and a privilege for me. So it hasn't been really difficult. Rewar- rewarding. Uh-huh. Um, I, I just my understanding of God's word and my understanding yeah. of God Himself. Mm, so it's like that's good. And, and I think it's Howard Hendricks who said this, but I just don't know. But it's always stuck with me is that. The word of God will draw you closer to the God of the word. Mm. And so I think from seminary, it it has drawn me closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that our uh, uh, president, Dr. Yarbrough, said when I first got here, he said, if you do this thing right, your assignments will become devotionals. Oh, yeah, I remember him saying that. So with my assignments, it isn't just homework. Yeah. And sometimes I lose sight of that. And, you know, it's like next, next assignment, next assignment. But... I'm so gl- grateful that, you know, the Holy Spirit will remind me subtly, you know, yeah. enjoy this. Like, really think about what you're learning. Yeah. We do and those this papers. Is and it's like, yeah, it's like, I love and I, this. I'm so grateful for even my Hebrew professor this semester. Like, oh, yeah. And just giving us that really strong reminder that, hey, you're not, this is worship. Mm-hmm. This, we're not just coming to class just to study a textbook. Like, yeah. let's get on our knees. Let's pray. Let's be humble as we as we study and approach the the, the writ, written word of God. Yeah. And um, you know, don't treat it just like a normal textbook and mm-hmm. just to be studied, but to and hurry to and get be, done. Right. For it to be, it's it's supposed to change our life. So that's been uh, the re- the reward is 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 having more intimacy with God. That's good. Okay. How are classes structured? I feel like a lot of people think that it's, it's not like it's different. Yeah, it's because not, another cheap, question is not, about like what's the difference between going to a, a, a traditional. Uh, what's the difference between going to a traditional university and a seminary? Well, it's God centered. Yeah, it's God centered. I mean, you know, so um, we pray. One thing we go that's to unique, yeah. One <laughs> thing that's unique. Uh huh. Is that um, you pray before class. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might read a passage before class. Mm-hmm. Um, the, sing you know, a this, hymn. You might sing a hymn mid-class. It might yeah. be unplanned. I've seen that happen. That's how I learned one of my favorite hymns. Yeah. Is I was watching an online class and, you know, it was just, they were studying and it just got to the point to where it's like, man, this is amazing. Let's sing. Yeah. Let's sing one of our songs. And so... Um, that's what makes it unique mm-hmm. um, is that and then you, you're studying stuff that that is that has personal implications mm-hmm. like this is this is this is this is addressing your heart. Yeah. Like you're studying stuff that's addressing your heart, too. So it's like <laughs> when you go to university, and you're studying that all that kind of material. Uh, not that it's bad, but it's not addressing the heart. Mm-hmm. It's not addressing your heart. It's not addressing the heart of others. But when you're dealing with the word of God, and you're studying theology and you're studying God and um that is that's what makes it a lot unique is yeah. that this is a spiritual mm-hmm. this is more God related God this is more connected to God mm-hmm. so um those are some of the things not to mention a lot more that make it unique like chapel and mm-hmm. um you know the expectation that you're connected to a local church and you're serving yeah. and things like that so 
yeah yeah and i think too like the structure itself of like i don't know how to address that but like i'm thinking about class time like you still schedule like you can have a tuesday thursday class and mm-hmm. it will still last like 90 minutes or so like yeah that's planning the average, your schedule. yeah that's the average yeah and some classes are different you know you have the summer semester opportunities mm-hmm. or um what's it called some intensive intensive. you have intensive opportunities where you can do a class and basically have the class eight to five monday through friday Mm -hmm. and then turn your assignments in the next two weeks so i don't know if that was offered in uh, universities but that opportunity is is you know here i know here at dts i don't know about all seminaries but yeah um, as far as structure like i said i mean you might pray Mm -hmm. and then depending on what kind of class it is if it's a bible class then you're you're walking through the book of Genesis. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right. And so uh you're 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 the professor will have slides typically. Um you got your Bible open and you're you're asking questions. Mm-hmm. Professor might ask some questions and he's teaching. Yeah. He's teaching. So it's like a Bible study. That's good. Yep. And so um it's like a Bible study, but <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's like much more extensive than a Bible study. I just want to make right, sure absolutely, that yeah, because yeah. Yeah, people's but, Bible but studies it, look but different. Is, but this is, it's like the definition of studying the Bible. Yeah, it's not I would a say tradi- that this is this is real Bible study. Yeah, this isn't it's not the, like you know. No what offense, do you think this, this means to right, you? This isn't the sentimental. Yeah, it's in um, depth. How do you feel about this text? Like, yeah, it's, no, it's like we're what researching. Is, what is what is this? What is, we're trying to really understand what God is saying. Mm-hmm. Um, in its in its context, we're trying yeah. to really understand in its historical context, the language, all of that. We're so trying you're to studying understand it. all yeah. of those things, not mm-hmm. just not just the Bible, but there are like like he talked about the books that go along with the. Mm-hmm. With, so yeah, yeah, and then so the other thing that she someone else asked, oh, they asked the length of our programs. I mentioned that mine. Okay. So mine is one hundred twenty hours. Oh, yeah. So, which is which typically four to, to five years. Yes. Just think of undergrad for mine. But it's master's level work. Yeah, master's level work. And yeah. you work full time. Yeah, yeah. And we have a baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> that whole yeah, four and, to five years and, thing. And, and, and mine is two years. But yeah, so yours is, I think yours is like a normal master's yeah. kind of situation where you two, three years. So, but yeah, so you can... Um, it gives you that foundation to be able to critically think for the rest of your life. You're going to learn for the rest of your life. And it also is different. Whereas you are not like when you go to a traditional university, which we did before we have undergraduate degrees, but like you're getting a degree to go to a job like specifically. So for instance, my degree, I'm getting a master's in Christian education. There's so many things I can do with that. And there's not a specific field. Whereas like I took nursing and it was like, I know that I'm going to take nursing wards and I'm going to be a nurse after this. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Within ministry, you know, God can use you anyway. in, 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 in a multitude of ways. Um, Teaching, so it's, preaching, it's not, missions. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's, it's a lot. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So how are you feeling? I'm so proud of you. Thank you, thank you. I'm just, I'm just grateful. So he's uh, super humble, y'all. I'm like, I'm surprised he's even doing this. <laughs> but I'm so proud of you. Oh yeah, I'm glad we captured this moment so we can look back at it. But is there anything else that you want to say? Like any advice that you would give to anybody looking to come to seminary, or if you want to say something specifically from a male point of view? Because I'm always mm-hmm. on here talking about it. Like anything you want to say? Well, think about why you're coming. Mm -hmm. Um, and then hold on to that, you Mm. know, even through the midst of it, you know, maybe write that down somewhere and check in every semester and throughout the semester why you're in seminary. Definitely Um, do that. I feel like I need to do that. Right. (laughs) So know your, know your why. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's one piece of advice I would give, um, and make sure that you don't get lost in in studying God's word that you miss God mm-hmm. That's because good. man like I remember taking soteriology which is the study of salvation the doctrine of salvation and the reason why I loved that class so much is because mm-hmm. we, we, we 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 got a deeper understanding of God's grace yeah and the character of God so um and sometimes seminary gets a 
a bad rap, bad report. Oh, yeah. They told us about that in the beginning. Yeah, people... Um, and, and say it's some of it where faith where where faith goes to die or something yeah like that. and where and, and so some people just get there's a lot of negative perceptions about seminary um you know but i, I just think it depends on the person depends on I the individual so yeah um because it's it's it has shaped my life it has changed my life it's still changing my life i love it i love god more i love serving his people more like yeah it's had a very great impact on me. And so, um, yeah, of course, there are people who come out of here who are jerks and who want to just talk about the, the theological, you know, doctrine and stuff like that. And they don't know how to they don't know how to be um, personal. Yeah, personal. They don't know how to hurt, weep with those who weep um, and sensitive to the to, to the life situations that god's people go through and that's that's that is a situation with some seminaries too but it's not all it's not yeah we all. have some amazing friends who i feel like that yeah. definitely wouldn't be them so i don't even yeah. i wouldn't even say it's a majority yep so, so. yeah definitely know your why mm-hmm. that's definitely good. know your why okay i'll piggyback off that because that was just great advice mm-hmm. so thank you for joining me for this video Thank you all so much for watching. If you have more questions, like leave them below. Maybe there can be some banter back and forth between people who have seminary experience and things like that. And we'll even, you know, respond to some comments as well. Thank you guys. See ya.